Well, folks, good evening once again. Glad to be with you on the 23rd of December, getting closer each day. If you have children, I'm sure they're getting excited, uh, wondering what's happening for Christmas, what they're going to get. Uh, I'm excited because we're trying to see what we can give as well as get. So we're trying to see what we can do for somebody else out there and it feels really good when you're trying to meet the needs of others if it's something you haven't tried yet i would say get on it right away do what you can to show the love of jesus to another family or another individual this holiday season doing something for somebody else because the love of jesus compels you is something you will never ever regret through the ceaseless ages of eternity. Let's pray before we continue in our story uh, in Matthew chapter 1. May have started a little early because Jesus is going to be born today as we read uh, through, but that's just fine with me because we don't know the exact day anyways. Uh, let's bow our heads and get into our reading. Father in heaven, Lord, be with us today and bless us. We thank you for giving us your word. And Lord, as we just spend a little time going through the Christmas story this holiday season, we ask, Lord, that you will fill our hearts with praise and gratitude for the ultimate gift, the gift that keeps on giving, the gift that is interceding on my behalf and on each person's behalf who's listening now this very moment in the heavenly courts above. Lord, we ask that you will bless each one of us today as we read your word and speak to us through your word. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to move on a little bit here. Uh, we ended yesterday in verse 21, and we were going to start in verse 22. And so here we go, Matthew chapter 1, 22. So all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet uh, by the Lord through the prophet saying, behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. God with us. What a wonderful statement. You know, in the garden of Eden, God who is wandering in the garden and walking with his new creation and spending time in close communion and harmony with them. Remember, it says in the eve of the day, he came to spend time with them. Imagine walking and talking with the king of the universe, the creator, each and every evening. What a wonderful experience, but it was lost. God with us. That idea was lost in Eden, but there was a promise given that a baby was going to be born, that this baby was going to come and was going to repair or bring atonement at one meant for what had been lost. Now, as we're reading, we get to verse 23, and it simply says, his name will be called Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. You know, we're reading through the Desire of Ages, and Quite a while back, when we first started that book, we read this statement on page 24 of Desire of Ages. Since Jesus came to dwell with us, we know God is acquainted with our trials and sympathizes with our griefs. Every son and daughter of Adam may understand that our Creator is the friend of sinners for every doctrine of grace, every promise of joy, every deed of love, every divine attraction presented by the Savior's life on earth, we see God with us. This holiday season, where are you seeing God with you? What blessings have you seen amid all the turmoil of this life? What things can you attribute to God being with you this holiday season. He is with each one of us. He is there by our side. And if we have not let him in, he's knocking on the door of our heart and he is begging and pleading to come in and to abide with us. Yes, that atonement that was lost at Eden, that being together, that at one meant walking with God in the evening. When Jesus went home to glory, he promised another comforter who would be in us and abide with us continually, the Holy Spirit. So yes, we can enjoy that close communion, that close harmony that was lost 
at Eden has already been restored. And if you choose today, you can already feel his presence in your life, in your home this Christmas season. I want to read on a little bit. Verse 24. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife and did not know her until she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. You know, this is a phenomenal story. If you know the history, uh, living in, in Nazareth at the time, living, living being a Jew, uh, you certainly... Uh, would be chastised and thought of as lower than the low if you were having a baby out of wedlock. And here you have a young couple betrothed. And imagine, you know, sometimes you wonder, how did Jesus pick the right family? Well, look at the hearts of these two. Look at Joseph. Look at his utmost belief and trust in God. His wife comes to him and says, hey, I, I'm, I'm with child. It's not yours. And I haven't been with anybody else. It belongs to God. I ask myself often, how would I have handled that? Joseph was the right man. God knew the heart of Joseph. He knew the heart of Mary. He knows your heart and he knows my heart. He knows what we're capable of and he knows what else we could be capable of when we begin to cooperate more fully with the Holy Spirit. So here he has listened to the Lord. He is not knowing his wife. He's taken her to be his wife. And then we move on into chapter two. But ask yourself, how faithful am I? How ready am I if God says do something and it seems by earthly standards incomprehensible? Recognize that earthly things are only understood with the carnal mind, but heavenly things are understood when the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding in your heart and in your mind. So if God asks you to do something extraordinary this holiday season, don't start making up all the reasons and all the, all the things why you cannot do it. Simply say, here I am, Lord, send me. Yes, Lord, it might seem like something that is out of this world, but the God that I serve is out of this world. Therefore, I am going to listen and do what you ask. Now I'm going to read just a little bit further this evening, starting in chapter two. So reading the last verse one more time. So he called his name Jesus. They brought forth a firstborn son and called his name Jesus. Reading on, now after Jesus was born in Nazareth of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who was born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. Why would you be troubled if the Messiah was born? Why would you be troubled? Only if you're trying to cling to your own earthly power are you troubled when the king of the universe comes and tries to sit on the throne of your heart and my heart. It's time for us to humble ourselves and to say, praise God, Jesus has come into the world and he's come to save us from our sins. And all we have to do is climb down off that little throne of our heart and let Jesus occupy first and foremost position in every area of our life. So this is what Herod does. When he gathered all the chief priests and scribes and all the people together, he inquired, where is this Christ to be born? So they said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for it is written by the prophet, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. And today that same shepherd is shepherding spiritual Israel. That is, he is shepherding anyone who will believe on the name of Jesus and wish for salvation. I want to read a little bit more from Desire of Ages, page 62 and 63. And here we read, Those learned teachers would not stoop to be instructed by those who they termed heathen. In other words, they would not believe the word of the wise men. 
It could not be, they said, that God has passed by them to communicate with ignorant shepherds or uncircumcised Gentiles. You know, brothers and sisters, sometimes... We think we're so good at understanding the Bible and we're so good at understanding doctrine and we're so good on our own and we're so wise that Jesus has to send wise men that we might deem ignorant to instruct us. He's had to pass over us because of our lack of humbleness, our lack of allowing him to teach and instruct us. Let us not be found like these learned biblical scholars of the day. Let us be instructed by the king of the universe. And if it takes a humble shepherd to come and instruct me, or if it takes some heathen who I would never think would know the things of heaven, let me test that message by the word of God. But let us be open to the leading of God today so he doesn't have to pass us by and have somebody else do the instructing that he oh so desired for you and I to carry out. They determined to show their contempt for reports that were exciting King Herod and all Jerusalem. They would not even go to Bethlehem to see whether these things were so. And they led the people to regard the interest in Jesus as fanatical or excitement. You know, folks, Jesus was born. His own received him not. You and I call him our own. How are we receiving him this Christmas season? Because if you get the sun, if you happen to watch the message the other weekend, if you get the sun, you get everything. You get all the rights and privileges. You get the inheritance that goes along with being a child of the king of the universe. So let's not forget this holiday season. Don't harden your heart. Don't think you know enough or have it all together and you can't still be instructed and learn more. Open the doors of your heart to the king of the universe. Let him come and walk with you in the evening as he wanted to in the Garden of Eden and as he gave his son to die for us so that he could reclaim that relationship. Spend time with Jesus each and every moment. He desires a relationship with you. He gave everything up to have that relationship restored. Won't you let him in today? Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, I ask that you will bless us this evening. I ask that you will make your face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, blessings and have a wonderful rest of your evening.